All right, we're going to call this meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors into session today. Thanks to everyone for being here. Uh, we will start uh, today's meeting like we always do with the pledge and the invocation. And I'd like to turn it over to our Vice Chairman, Clint Hickman, to introduce those who will be presenting today. Looks like something's happening here today. Um, yeah, I, it's uh, my privilege. Uh, we, we get to uh, share um, the responsibility at times to uh, have somebody come and say the uh, prayer and the pledge. So I decided um, for this special meeting to invite my children uh, to say the prayer and the pledge. So uh, that is Benton Hickman, who is the actually religious coordinator for his school at St. Thomas Aquinas. So he's going to say the prayer, so anything can happen with that. And uh, my daughter, Marcella, is a patriotic little girl, and she is going to say the pledge. So uh, if we could all rise and greet Benton and Marcella. Today, we come with our hearts deeply thankful for all the gifts we have. We are thankful to those who have helped us to get to where we are today. And we are thankful for all of our supervisors for all their hard labor and thank them for their continuous love for the county. Indeed, we all come from many places, backgrounds, and many different paths, yet today we will all come here inspired by a singular mission, to work for the well-being of all those who inhabit Maricopa County and the state of Arizona. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, too. And if you notice, they're in their uniforms because Benton was working on me all last night about just go ahead and skipping the whole day of school, but that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> And then his oldest brother, who's a freshman at uh, Brophy alongside uh, Steve Chukri's son, Grant, uh, was also pressuring me to go ahead and miss today. But you go to that school, you don't miss a day. Yeah, right? I think Steve? my son was actually lobbying to miss the day, too, just to come <laughs> see you. <laughs> should, should, should have invited him. Uh, anyway, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you very, very much. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for uh, supporting your dad and all that he does. Uh, it's great to get to work with him, and I see that uh, that... Uh, uh, political talent has uh, gone on down to the next generation, so maybe you guys will be uh, sitting up here someday. So again, thanks for, thanks for being here. We're really excited to see uh, so many friends here today, as well as uh, many elected officials, uh, and just wanted to recognize them briefly. Want to thank our county treasurer, uh, Royce Flora, for being here today, as well as his chief deputy, Russell Pierce. Thanks so much uh, for being here today. We also have the superintendent uh, of uh, schools for Maricopa County, Steve Watson. Steve, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Along with Matt Morales from his office as well. Great to see you guys. Thanks for all that you do. Really honored uh, to see uh, my predecessor on the board, uh, Andy Kanasik is here. Uh, did an incredible job of representing District 3. Uh, I've uh, been trying to fill his shoes here for the past few years very, very poorly, but I'm trying, Andy. Thanks for being here. And, uh, and great to see you. Uh, I think we also have the county attorney. Alistair Adele is with us as well. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your service uh, to Maricopa County. Uh, also, I think I saw Bill Wiley, who's our uh, administrator over the assessor's office. Um, okay. Uh, so thank you, Bill, for being here, as well as our Maricopa County Sheriff, Paul Penzone. Thank you, Sheriff, for being here. Thank you for your service. Uh, from the uh, judicial branch, we had the presiding judge of the Maricopa County Superior Court, uh, Judge Welty with us. Thank you for being with us, Judge. Uh, we also have another judge with us today, Judge Pam Gates. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, as well as my dad and, and our daughters, Emily and Corinne. Thanks for being here today, uh, guys. I think I've gotten, did I miss anyone? All right. Well, wonderful. Again, thanks to, to everyone for being here uh, for this for this very special day. All right. Uh, with that, uh, Madam Chair, can you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Sellers here. Supervisor Chukri here. Supervisor Hickman here. Supervisor Gallardo here. Chairman Gates here. Thank you. 
All right, well, we're gonna get right to the business of this meeting then. Uh, I would call for uh, nominations for chair of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors for 2020. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to nominate uh, Clint Hickman uh, as our chairman for 2020. All right, thank you very much for that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Reluctantly, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> All opposed? Wonderful. That motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Chairman Hickman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, buddy. Grab your coffee. <laughs> this. That's my phone. <laughs> so first of all, hey, thank thank you, everybody, for, for coming today and uh, watching my second uh, second go at this. Uh, Andy, thank you for being here. I just asked Andy, how many times did you do it? And he's he's forgotten, lost count. So uh, but the great thing is I get to follow a fantastic chairman and you got to follow a fantastic chairman. So the, the strategy remains the same. Uh, we are going to keep doing a great job, I hope, for the county. Um, first off, I blew this four years ago. Uh, there are so many different moving pieces to this uh, that I wanted to formally apologize to my colleague Steve Chukri because I got done with it, we walked out and I still had this plaque in hand. So Steve, uh, I'm, for you, I'm gonna do this right this year. So, uh, Bill Gates, I would like to uh, call attention again to just what a fabulous job uh, that you did this year. This was an incredibly turbulent year. Um, I think some of us read about it in the paper. Uh, we have a new county attorney, that went super well. Uh, but other things occurred this year that were uh, kind of mind-blowing to all of us, and it and it had a lot of work, and there was a lot of legal expertise that needed to come to hand, and you navigated that through so well, and I'm going to probably touch on that a little bit later uh, in, on this session, but but thank you, great great job. See how your your kids have just a great father, and we all got to got to see you in action. So, if uh, you could, I would. Like to uh, present this to you, presented to Bill Gates, Chairman Board of Supervisors 2019 in recognition of your leadership, presented by the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. And I'd like to give this to you and get a picture with all of your, all of your colleagues down here. So first off, if uh, you guys could indulge me, um, I wanted to introduce uh, some great people that uh, are in my life. Uh, and you'll see that uh, I have a lot of ladies in my life. First off, my wife Jennifer uh, is here today. Wave, Jennifer. <laughs> That's my wife, Jennifer, if you haven't seen her. My mother-in-law, uh, Veronica Bosick, is here today. She took a day off work. Of course, you've met my kids. Uh, my mom, that helps me quite a lot in this role, my mom, Gertie Hickman, is here. Uh, my 91-year-old father, uh, Bill Hickman, is here today, too. 
Uh, I will tell you a quick story. I asked Dad in the office two days ago and said, hey, you're invited, would you like to come to this? And uh, he looked at me and said, I think I better stay at work. So thanks for missing a little bit of portion of work today. I, I'm hoping everybody's got everything covered for you, but thank you for coming today, Dad. Uh, also, uh, with great pride is uh, my sister-in-law, uh, Katrina Marr, is here, and she has brought my goddaughter, uh, so Sienna. So thank you guys for coming. 2020 is going to be a very interesting year. Oh, I told Bill, I ragged on him a little bit about this. Mr. Lawyer and Mr. Orator over here. I'm always stunned on, on how these guys do these speeches. And uh, Steve always has an impactful way of speaking. Bill, last year, memorized this entire speech. And I said, there will be no memorization. And for some of you who witnessed uh, four years ago, there will be no shower scene video this year. So I'm gonna cut that off. I've gotten older, it's, it just doesn't work anymore. Um, 2020 is gonna be a, a very interesting year. New partnerships will get their first tests. Building projects that began years ago will get final approval. We have elections to run. We have budgeting to do and plenty of things that are going on in the paper, most of which concerning county business. So as my first active chairman, I'd like to nominate Bill Gates to succeed me as chairman effective immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I decline, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's an, it's an honor to serve as chairman of the Board of Supervisors as we enter a new decade. A lot has changed in the four years since I first held this position. But for me, the mission is the same, Focus on our mandates, do them well, and protect and serve the taxpayer. As a county government, our job is not to solve every problem or be involved in every issue. It's to bring stability to a diverse and dynamic region. It's to make this place where prosperity lasts and democracy flourishes, where each individual has the opportunity to create a high quality life knowing that their government is spending their money on mandated services that enhance health, safety, and give residents a voice in this process. We're going to have plenty of opportunities to live those values in the coming year, and I couldn't ask for better colleagues to serve alongside me. Supervisor Gates, thank you for your leadership over the past year. 2019 wasn't the easiest year for Maricopa County, but as chairman, you handled it with grace and a steady hand. I'm grateful for the clarity you bring this board and for your work in spearheading the Smart Region Consortium a public-private partnership which connects participating governments with technology-based innovations. I believe this collaboration will result in a Maricopa County that is better positioned for the future with more opportunities, more connections, and better service for residents. So thank you, Bill, for that. Supervisor Sellers, you've made it clear that we appointed the right person to represent District 1. Your energy and passion for the region are apparent on your social media <laughs> and in your comments here on the dais, uh, you are a tireless champion, not just for the East Valley, but for the entire county. And if you attend the meetings, I do not know, Jack, if you even sleep. So thank you for getting out there and seeing and showing everybody who you are and what you do for the county. We will look to your expertise in transportation and infrastructure in the coming year as your region considers what a new Proposition 400 might look like. You and, I, you and I both are believers in a comprehensive transportation plan that it's essential to the success and the economic vitality of our region. As the incoming chairman, I would like you to be the vice chair of the Board of Supervisors. This year was, is going to be a team effort. Supervisor Chukri, as the longest serving member of this board, meaning he is the old man of the board. You used to be Andy, but now Steve is. Not an age, sure, okay, all right. You have helped transform how the county serves as its, re its residents by bringing a business mindset to government. Your connections in the community and nationally mean you don't just talk about innovation, you bring us examples of how to do it and it benefits us all. Thank you for your continued support. Supervisor Gallardo, your experience and perspective makes us a better and more inclusive board. You're the current president-elect and future president of the County Supervisors Association. 
which is an extremely important role to this county. There's, that is the interface we have with the other rural counties, and you know how important it is. You've been working hard at it already. You're gonna be a fantastic CSA president. You're the only board member who has served down at the legislature and the only one with elections experience. Your elections exper expertise in particular will be of utmost value to this year as this board now oversees day of election activities. This brings me to elections, which is probably the most central thing uh, we have in store this year. I think this board agrees our first short-term goal in 2020 is to pull off a fantastic presidential preference election on March 17th. We're going to do it by communicating early and often to our voters, making early voting available for nearly one month at 40 different locations, increasing the number of election day polling places to 220, and reducing peak wait times to less than 30 minutes per voter by maximizing technology and staff. You can meet, read more about the plan by going to maricopa.gov backslash 2020 PPE plan. Many voters already have their eyes on the primary election in August and the general in November, and we do too. We partnered with the recorder's office last year to ensure bipartisan oversight of elections not seen in Maricopa County in more than 50 years. In addition, the board has invested over $15 million to make sure we have the right personnel and updated equipment. The integrity and success of our elections is my number one priority in 2020, and I would like to acknowledge two people who will be integral to that success. Scott Jarrett, the Director of Election Day and Emergency Voting. Where are you, Scott? We've seen you a lot, and we're gonna see a lot more this year, who reports directly to the board. And Ray Valenzuela, I don't know if I saw Ray. Uh, Ray Valenzuela, the Director of Election Services and Early Voting, who reports to the recorder. Um, I think we've had a series of votes over the, over the last couple years, and the work that Steve and Bill and Steve have done uh, with our recorder to create a collaborative approach is going to pay off big for the county voter. I truly believe that, and we are going to be having a series of meetings um, in that regard. Their work in crafting the first ever election day and emergency voting plan for the PP will serve as a fantastic template for the planning collaboration that must occur if we are able to deliver the elections our residents expect and deserve. We will again need an army of volunteers and poll workers to make sure voters have a great voting experience. Not unlike jury duty, it is our civic duty to help make sure democracy continues. Anyone can do it, whether it's setting up a polling place prior to the election or working as a poll worker on election day. To assist in this effort, I will be asking members of our talented county workforce to fill some of those crucial positions. Last election, we had over 350 county employees step up for the 2018 general election. With the success of our new volunteer 13K program, I expect this number to be even greater this year. Employees who want to sign up now can get in touch with our volunteer 13K program. Now, I've been thinking about this because how well it worked, and I think it can be expanded. Um, so many of the county workers from McDot through the IT department stepped up in 2018 in that general election, and we didn't see so much uh, about the running of that because I think there was so many people that brought their talents to bear for the, for the voter. And I am hoping and making my call towards county people that to seriously consider working in another capacity for us that day of. I would, I would very much appreciate uh, the volunteers to do that. Next brings me to government operations as I started to speak about. I think everyone on this dais is committed to running a lean and efficient government, but how do we really do that? I believe our economy depends on a strong dollar and excessive government taxation and spending reduces the value of that dollar. One way to limit spending is by limiting our operations to what is in state law. This board rarely steps out of our statutory mandates. So if we do, we need to make sure we bring value. Whether it's county regional parks, workforce development, or animal control, we need to bring true vision and make sure we are the ones defining success. With animal care and control, we should ask ourselves if we are the correct or only form of government to best fill this space. 
If the answer is yes, then let us truly bring our business mindset to this issue and not let emotions steer this conversation. We are saving more than 95% of the pets that come through our shelters, but at a growing cost to taxpayers. Is this sustainable? We have benchmarked ourselves against other jurisdictions and examined best practices. Now we need to find and implement the right approach for our unique situation. Our nonprofits and cities have a stake in animal care and control as well. We should expand and leverage those partners and ensure everyone in the community is doing their fair share. We owe it to ourselves and the taxpayers. While the regional parks are not a mandated service of county government, this is where we can see significant value to the quality of life and the economy of our great county. A recent study of our parks economic impact conducted by ASU found that every dollar invested in the county park system returns $1.42 in economic impact to the region. One investment I'm really excited about is the creation of the Vulture Mountain Regional Park. In 2019, we partnered with the Bureau of Land Management and in this very chamber signed the documents to acquire more than 1,000 acres of land for county park development within the 71,000 acre Vulture Mountain Recreation Area. Um, I think you guys remember that, the Hacienda Preserve and that, I have drove past that uh, just a, a week and a half ago and it's in the residents up there, about six or seven of them at the, at the meeting I had with them commented on how well that is going. So I, I appreciate this board so much when it came to that. And there's other lands up there now to, to protect and preserve. Phase one of four should begin this summer and will include all park road construction in partnership with McDot, as well as the installation of park utility infrastructure and site grading. When the park is completed, it will have the county's first formal off-highway vehicle recreation area and provide quality amenities and training opportunities for this popular sport. We anticipate Vulture Mountain Regional Park will be a huge boost for Wickenburg and other West Valley communities, both in terms of the economy and quality of life. We have one of the largest and best run park systems in the United States. This is no accident. I want to recognize the significant and lasting impact of county supervisors that came before us. Supervisors in the 60s realized the lasting value of protecting our national heritage, our natural heritage for future generations and began setting aside large regional parks to meet the needs of current and future generations. This is one reason why so many people want to live here. In keeping with their legacy, we too have a duty to provide natural places for our children and grandchildren as the county continues to grow and prosper. And if you'll indulge me for a second, uh, where's, where's Andy? Andy, you've been such a leader in the county park system. Every time we go in, uh, every time I go into the parks that are on my side, everyone asks me, how's Andy doing? So that was true leadership, what you showed and to develop the county trail system. Thank you for being here because this is a solidly important function of county government. So thank you, Andy, for the hard work that you inspired us all to continue on. Another way we can create property that lasts is through a predictable regulatory climate that pr promotes job creation in a healthy economy. During my first chairmanship in 2016, I asked for a moratorium on new government rules and regulations. The mo moratorium sent a message that government doesn't need to expand endlessly, that we can take a step back, work with businesses rather than against them, and that in doing so, we can continue to protect public health, safety, and the environment. This year, I think we should reaffirm our commitment to improving the regulatory processes and decreasing regulatory burdens. I am asking my colleagues to stand with me again and vote for another moratorium. This is good for current and future residents, for business and for county government. Another success when I was first chairman was the creation of Vendor University, which was our effort to make it easier for local merchants to do business with Maricopa County. I remember well the first ever Vendor University event in Glendale where nearly 100 local businesses met face to face with county workers and learned the ins and outs of partnering with us to provide goods and services. Since then, the Office of Procurement Services has conducted a dozen Vendor University events which have produced an average yearly increase of 14% in the number of businesses providing goods or services to the county. When more vendors bid, 
we get better uh, service and it keeps the jobs local. As a founding member of Local First, I want to encourage all county departments to build on this success and proactively increase their outreach efforts so that it is easier to move to, for more vendors to do business with Maricopa County. In the past few years, we'll move to Clean Start. I, I wanted to kind of reflect back because sometimes we do things in one year and then we get to see the impacts in, in later years, and this is, this is one of them. Uh, clean Start Initiative. In the past few years, we've done a better job providing second chances for those involved with the criminal justice system. It's an issue my family is passionate about. Working with Human Services Department's Workforce Development Division, the county has implemented several new and innovative initiatives to help people find a way back to stability. In 2016, under my chairmanship, we launched Clean Start, which replaced paid county staff working in the commercial style jail laundry with former inmates and probationers. We wanted to give them the opportunity to get work skills and behavioral training so they were able to get jobs after incarceration. After an 18 month period, the Clean Start Project served 156 offenders with medium to high risk of recidivism and 67% of them successfully completed the training necessary for employment. And I'm really hoping that all 67% have jobs in this economy right now. The Clean Start program has since evolved. Now in collaboration with the MCSO, Adult Probation and St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance, Community Kitchen, inmates learn culinary skills while in custody in the food factory for three weeks, then get paid work experience while on probation. This is just one example. In total, we've been able to direct approximately $1 million in federal workforce funds to these kinds of job training efforts, which doesn't just help justice-involved individuals it also helps the community. Fewer repeat offenders means lower jail costs, and more people with jobs mean a stronger economy. All of this leads to safer communities. Um, and thank you, Steve, uh, for your leadership in that. As, as we morph that into, I'm assuming that the restaurant industry is getting some great workers out of Maricopa County. The ITR and uh, the 225 building. Speaking of safer communities in 2020, we'll officially open a new jail. The intake, transfer, and release facility on our Durango campus applies science and best practices so we get police officers back on the streets faster, reduce the cost of transporting inmates, and give people in custody a better chance of success upon release. The facility will have courtrooms, physical and mental health care, holding facilities for shorter stays and more than 1,000 beds for longer stays. The ITR is designed around efficiency and is built to serve our public safety needs for decades to come. So thank you, Sheriff Penzone, and with your leadership of getting, getting that place built. I guess we got to see some of that going up. It's, it's really a, a nice looking building and, and you've got great people that are gonna be in there servicing the community. Another great facility opening this year is the redesigned building at 225 Madison. This used to be a jail, but instead of tearing it down at great cost to taxpayers and with a massive amount of waste sent to the landfill, we have repurposed it as office space for our county attorneys. Doing so will also enable other county departments to get out of lease space and move into a central location downtown, saving even more money. Our prosecutors will also benefit from easier access to courts and each other. Uh, Alistair. <laughs> Congratulations, real soon you're gonna get a bouncing baby building. Um, and we, we laughed the whole time prior to you when we were talking about this with former county attorney Bill Montgomery. It's hard for us to shake out of our head that we're putting attorneys in an old jail. So that's, it's no longer an inside joke. I, it, it's, a, it's a great thing, it's, it's hooked up to the security apparatus, to the jails and the tunnels, and I, I think everybody's gonna stay much safer. And to get out of all of that lease space uh, that the county doesn't own is gonna be really good in the, in the years to come. I am proud to support both of these projects, which were completed without taxpayer bonds, and grateful for the vision of those who came before us in anticipating needs and focusing on long-term solutions. So in conclusion, in 2020, I see a chance to build on the successes of the past decade, not by trying to do everything for everyone, but by trying to do a few important things very well. We will run successful elections. 
we will examine our mandates and make sure we are creating value for taxpayers in all we do. And we will look at ways to create prosperity that lasts and opportunity as wide-reaching wide, wide reaching as our landscape. Thanks again to my fellow board members for placing their trust in me as chairman and indulging me with the time here this morning. I look forward to the challenges ahead. So let's get started on the rest of today's agenda. Thank you all for, for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Awesome. What's great to see is all the county workers get to see that and then they start scurrying off to their jobs. But for those of you who want to stick around for the formal, uh, there's going to, to be some other, other actions here that might affect your departments. Uh, Mom and dad, you guys can go home. <laughs> Unless you really want to stick around for a formal board meeting. Mr. Ms. Mr. Chairman, before we move on to the formal board action, I was hoping to be able to just say a, a, a quick thank you to, 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 to Bill. Um, I, I was not familiar with Bill. I really hadn't had a chance to work with him. I knew him from the city of Phoenix when he first got elected. But I really got to see him work uh, really in action uh, when we were negotiating the elections agreement. And uh, we had private meetings in his office and I, I, I saw him sitting there negotiating. And I went back to the office and I told Chris, I said, we got the right person sitting there uh, being able to negotiate this on behalf of the board. And sure enough, I mean, you, you've shown leadership throughout uh, not only your, your tenure so far uh, here as, you know, as a supervisor, but particularly as the chairman. Uh, so oftentimes we, we, you know, inside jokes, you know, we, we make attorney, <coughs> attorney comments and jokes about attorneys and so on. But this was the one year that I think was a good time for us to have an attorney at the helm. Mm -hmm. It really was. Someone that was able to bring his legal expertise and it's just it's, it's common sense, political sense uh, to the board. And uh, you've shown great leadership, not only just through the elections, through the uh, through the appointment of, of our new county attorney, uh, current situations. I mean, you have done just a tremendous job. It has been an honor to see you work, and and I just want to thank you for your leadership as the chairman of this board. Mr. Chair, if I can just respond. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for the kind words, Steve. Um, it uh, it's it. You, you mentioned the election situation, and we would not be where we were where we are and having this partnership moving forward if it wasn't for you. Not only have, did you work in elections, but you were really able to, you know, because we are here, as opposed to at the city of Phoenix, we are elected as partisan individuals here. And to be able to work, you know, Republican and Democrat together, to work with the Democrat county recorder, uh, Steve, you were key to making that, to getting that accomplished. It wasn't always easy. Yeah. Uh, we had some, you know, two steps forward, one step back. But without you on the board, we would not have accomplished this. So, so I thank you, thank you for the kind words, but thank you for your leadership. And and you know, what, you know, people always talk about rancor and partisan division, but I can tell you that this board is an example of people. It doesn't matter what party we are, and this board works together on issues and getting stuff done. And it's it's just been an honor to to serve in this role. Thanks, Steve. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Sellers. Yeah, and I, I also want to thank you, uh, Chairman Gates, uh, former Chairman Gates, uh, for your leadership over uh, the past year during some unusually challenging times for us. But I really also want to thank the entire board for helping me to acclimate to this position. You know, even after eight years as a city council member and a vice mayor, I had a lot to learn because this is a much larger job than city council, as you well know, uh, Mr. Gates. But um, <clears throat> you've taught me a lot about county and county government, and I certainly look look forward and excited to work together with our incoming chairman, uh, Chairman Hickman, uh, in helping us move towards being a smart region in Maricopa County. So thank you. Mr. Supervisor Mr. Chukri. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I would echo the comments uh, about Mr. Gates uh, and uh, at our last meeting 
uh, would echo my own comments, I guess, uh, back then. But but Bill not only did everything that uh, Mr. Gardo said, he did it with with what appeared to be great ease, uh, and and you did it very gracefully. And your your bride and daughters and father are here, and I want to thank them for putting your dad and husband and son on loan to the county for that year because it takes a lot of hours uh, and and it takes a lot of gray hair uh, to come to come along with it so uh, just more and more uh, compliments to you bill for not only how you tackled the issues and how you handled them but the the grace that you utilized uh, along the way uh, and then to you mr chairman uh, I'll, I'll never forget in 2013 I was in Cave Creek and I had met with some constituents and there was an issue going on. I can't even tell you what the issue is today, uh, but it was very complicated. It was very convoluted and it was very important to the region. Uh, and we solved it. We solved the problem. And one of my constituents came up to me and said, so our work is done. Uh, and I said, no, it's not. <clears throat> we might have been able to bring a business mindset to this one situation. But the business mindset we're trying to bring to Maricopa County is across the county and it's always ongoing. And today, your speech is a testimony to that. Mm -hmm. Today, what you highlighted in your speech is, is actually what a continuation of what we have to keep doing and keep minding the store to make us all successful, to make, make Maricopa County successful. So I thank you for that because we can get lost in all that. I think it's going to be an excellent year. And I know your family left, but you, you've got a beautiful wife and kids. Thank God they look like your wife. Uh, and <laughs> a, and your parents, your parents to be here at 91. Yeah. I hope to be standing upright at 91, <laughs> let alone coming down to Maricopa County. So uh, yeah. congratulations on such a beautiful, wonderful family Thank you, Steve. as well. And for giving a, a very well-delivered and content-filled speech. Thank you, Steve. I, I appreciate it uh, very much. Bill, uh, as, I, as I said before, such a tough year to navigate of different things that have occurred that maybe have never occurred in the county before. And I, I just think the world of your leadership and and that steady hand that, that you did. Some sometimes some of us like to let's just get the issue solved. Let's but you did everything in such a diligent fashion. It did remind us we do have time to think about this. We do have time to do it right, uh, take the emotions out of something. Uh, and just do it well. And I think, I think that's kind of why this board doesn't make the papers a lot, actually, because we, we're not rash. We take our time, we think about it, and we hopefully do it right. So with that leadership was on full display uh, this year. So I, I appreciate it very much, especially as being your colleague on a board. So um, thank you for being there and a wonderful job. So. With well, that? Yeah, thank you. Maybe if I can just take one more second, Mr. Chair. Thank you for, for, your, for being a great vice chair through, like you said, a, a, a tumultuous year. And uh, thank you for always reminding us of the importance of the volunteers that, that do so much for the county. I, re I really appreciate that. And of course, thanks for representing so many of my family members yeah. out in District <laughs> I'm 4. I'm looking at you. My dad, dad and I, and, and you know I have several others. Uh, and uh, just to Supervisor Chukri, I just want to thank you for never allowing us to settle. You're always pushing us that we, we are the fourth largest county in the country. We're the fastest growing county. And we, we joke sometimes about the term best in class, but, but it's not a joke at all. It's something you live by and you push this board and thank you for that. Uh, it's, it's so important. And finally, Jack, it's a thrill to have you on the board here. And your leadership on, for, a lot has been said about you being out in the community, you do an incredible job. And I think that comes in part from your, your background on the city council, that you know it's about the individuals in our communities. But beyond that, you're a visionary. And I hope everyone understands that, whether it's autonomous vehicles, smart cities, smart regions, you're pushing us as well uh, to be innovative. And, and so I salute you for, for your leadership. And again, just thrilled to have you there. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. You bet. Well, if you've picked up on the love fest, it's true. I mean, we, we, we talk a lot. We get to know each other's families. Um, thank you guys for being here. And, and it, does, it does take a lot of time and effort. And I appreciate, I appreciate so much this, this job. Um, at this time, I would like to make a special presentation and about one of those unsung heroes at the county. I would like to acknowledge Shelley Sherbach, who has provided 26 years of dedicated leadership and service to Maricopa County. Shelby will be retiring at the end of this week. Where is she? Sometimes, girl, you need to just stand up. 
<laughs> Shelby will be retiring at the end of this week. Shelby started her career with Maricopa County in the Department of Finance in 1993 and was appointed Chief Financial Officer in 2009. In June 2012, Shelby was appointed Assistant County Manager, Chief Financial Officer, where she was responsible for the management and oversight of several county departments. In 2016, Shelby received the CFO of the Year Award from the Phoenix Business Journal. Shelby has served on a number of boards, including serving as the Executive Director of the Industrial Development Authority, where she will continue in this role after retirement. Shelby has also provided leadership with the NACO Financial Services Board, and she chairs the county's Deferred Compensation Committee. Congratulations from the Board of Supervisors, and thank you for your dedication and contribution to the county. And with that comes the best wishes of all of us uh, board members and, of course, uh, the county manager. I'm hoping that you would like to come up and take a picture because I don't know what the clock stands for. I'm so far out of retirement that you're going to have to just read this off to me at times. So, Shelby, thank you. Can you please come up? Mr. Chairman, as uh, Shelby tries to quickly run away, uh, I, I'd like to just make a, a few comments, if I yeah, might, please. Uh, regarding her uh, great ability and the contributions you've made to Maricopa County. Uh, there's very few words that describe what a CFO does, but uh, Shelby is truly a CFO uh, to the full definition of, of the meaning of the word. and. All of us uh, remember the days of MASH, and and, uh, and there's radar. Uh, she's radar when it comes to being the CFO. You can't ask her a question she can't answer. And and Shelby, that's, that's very, very rare. And to be uh, here at the county as long as you have been and, and contributing so much each and every year you've been here, and to say that it's still a fresh day. You know, we, we sometimes had a colleague that ran another association in a different state, and he moved on to a bigger job and he said, Steve, I was looking at the clock. I knew it was time for me to leave. Shelby never looked at the clock. And she, she embraced this new board. She embraced our philosophies of, of how we can really make Maricopa County more dynamic uh, and, and is really more of a, it's an attribute to her. And, and I think it's also our success uh, comes from people just like Shelby uh, in the 13,000 members of our Maricopa County uh, family. So we're fortunate to still have you with the IDA, which is great, uh, but we will certainly miss you uh, in this role and, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you've done for Maricopa County. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Sellers. Yeah, I, I also want to thank uh, Shelby uh, for her years of service at Maricopa County and her dedication to the county. Uh, I frankly was frustrated when I learned that she was retiring but I'm pleased to know that she will now continue to be serving on our Maricopa County Parks Board in my district, District 1. So thank you, Shelby. Mr. Supervisor yeah, Gairo. Mr. Chairman, um, couldn't, couldn't move on without saying thank you to Shelby. Um, remember coming, here, coming up on, on, on the actual board, 
and being totally really clueless in, tr in terms of, of a lot of things here in Maricopa County. Coming to find out, I thought I knew it all. Come to find out, you, you, you know very little until you get in this seat and really start to operate. And Shelby has just been a treasure. I mean, anytime Chris and I would have issues, we could call Shelby and she would actually know where to go and what to do. And she, she had the answers to all the questions. So thank you, Shelby, for being such a, just a, a great person to work with and just a true friend. So thank you so much. Mr. Supervisor. Chair, yeah, Supervisor I'd like Gates. to echo, echo what everyone else has said, but again, uh, as CFO, that is such an important position in any organization, but particularly this organization, which has had an incredible track record of fiscal responsibility and discipline, and it doesn't just happen because the folks up on this dais say it. But, but Shelby has lived it every day, so thank you. The taxpayers, thank you, as well as with the IDA, an extremely important tool for economic development. And the work you've done with Greg and others is, is wonderful, and I am thrilled that, that you are going to be sticking around and assisting us with that. So, but having said that, congratulations on your retirement. I can't belabor all these points, but again... <laughs> What's, what Steve said, you see, that's why I let him talk first. I feel the same way. And Shelby, uh, thank you. For, for when, uh, when I became chairman uh, four years ago, I was stunned because about a month into it, Tom Manos, the county manager, decided to retire on us. And I thought, whoa. And then some other came, and I thought, why is everyone leaving now that I'm coming in here? Is it something about me, you know? But it's not. You gave us notice. Uh, and I knew this was coming, but unfortunately, we knew that was, this was coming. Um, so congratulations and, and good luck in everything you do. But thank you also for sticking around on the IDA and, and, sh and showing leadership there. It's, imp it's an important role to the business community. And uh, I thank you for still giving time of yours to the county service. So appreciate it. So thanks for everything. Okay. We are going to get uh, going now on the on the meat of the order. So we will now switch over um, to our statutory hearings uh, under Clerk of the Board. Item number five: Liquor License Applications. Uh, a special event license for Fun Lakers Club. It, uh, Madam Clerk, is there any anyone present to comment on item five A? I have no speaker slips, Mr. Chairman. Great, thank you. The board will now consider item five A. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under County Officers, Clerk of the Board, number six, appointment of the Fire Board Director for the Harquahala Valley Fire District. The Board will now consider item six. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you both. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. <laughs> Under Treasurer's Office, the Board will now consider items 7 through 9, offers on tax-deeded land parcels in the City of El Mirage, El Tesoro, and Merrill Creek. Mr. Chairman and Madam Clerk, I want to make sure I do this correctly. I would uh, make a motion to accept for item number 7, the $100 from the City of El Mirage. Uh, for item number 8, the total $20 from El Tesoro Homeowners Association. And then on uh, item number 9, the three parcel numbers and the offer from Merrill Creek Homeowners Association. That's correct. Does that suffice? Great. Thank you, Mr. Or Supervisor Chukri. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under county offices and departments, under animal care and control, item 10, kennel permit renewal, 11 through 17, donations. Under government relations, number 18, amend the 2020 legislative package. And under planning and development, number 19, resolution extending the moratorium on increased regulatory burdens. The board will now consider items 10 through 19. Mr. Chair, a motion to approve items uh, 10 through 19 with a brief comment. Thank you, Supervisor Gates. Second. I have a motion and a second. Supervisor Gates. I, uh, on number 19, this is resolution continuing the, the moratorium on increased regulatory burdens. I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, for taking the leadership to continue this. This has now been a, a long tradition that this board established before I came here and really pleased to see that. It's, even though this economy is going well, uh, there's, it is absolutely continues to be the case. We want to keep the, 
the touch on our and the burden on our business is low and at a minimum. So thank you for this. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Chairman. I would agree with that wholeheartedly, and also thank. Uh, the, the folks who have donated, you start to add these donations up to our animal care and control. It's really very meaningful, uh, and we're very grateful to them. Great. Great. Thank you both. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motions carry. Under public health 20 and 21, student rotation training agreements with Southern New Hampshire University and Chamberlain University. Item 22 is an agreement with Marana Health Center. 23, con, uh, contract and notice of award from National Association of County and City Health Officials. 24 and 20, through 28, amend contracts and IGAs with Arizona Immunization Partnership for Immunization, Banner Poison and Drug Information Center, Arizona Department of Health Services HIV Surveillance Program, Washington Elementary School District, and the City of Mesa. The board will now consider items 20 through 28. So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Second. Uh, I'm going to give it to Steve. Yeah, he, did. <laughs> he just got you. Okay, great. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Board of Supervisors 29 through 33, reappointments um, Merlin Carlson, Jean Connell Wolcher, Larry Pickard, Dr. Bob Branch, and Captain Mike Wilk. Wilkins, um, the board will now consider items 29 through 33. So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Second. And so I'll give it to Jack that time. He's getting louder. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And some of these are in my district. So uh, Larry, Merlin, um, and... Uh, and uh, Dr. Branch, I appreciate your I appreciate your service in these capacities. On the consent agenda, number 34, donation report. Number 35, duplicate warrants. Number 36, stale dated warrants. Number 37, property reclassification appeals and approvals. 38, city civil penalty appeals and approvals. 39, redemption of waivers for individuals and organizational exemptions. 40, abstract of the role containing the valuations by taxing jurisdictions of all property in the county, 41, treasurer's collections and investment summary report, and 42, canvas of elections. The board will now consider items 34 through 42. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Second. And a second, thank you, uh, Steve. I have a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Stadium District, S1 designation, oh, sorry. <laughs> See, this is the thing. We will now recess <laughs> as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Stadium District Board of Directors. Uh, under Stadium District, S1 designation of officers, the Board will now consider the nominations for officers for the Stadium District. Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, like to make a recommendation and a motion with a comment uh, to appoint Mr. Steve Gallardo to this role for 2020. Great, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second, thank you, Supervisor Gates. Mr. Chukri. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe that uh, we've had a quiet year, which we all know uh, concerning the, the stadium, but I want everyone to know that uh, I believe that there's some really meaningful things happening uh, in the future of what we think is a crown jewel right here in downtown. Uh, Phoenix, Steve is going to be uh, excellent, as you saw this year. Uh, this was something kind of we, we shifted, mm -hmm. uh, and and since it's it's a meaningful part of Maricopa uh, Maricopa County as well as in Mr. Gardo's district, uh, we have him being the secretary, and so I, I think we should continue that. Steve's going to be great, uh, and uh, I'm hopeful that uh, maybe this year we'll we'll know the future of the ballpark, the future of the D-backs. Uh, and I, I want to make sure that the public knows and those sitting here today that this is going to be a meaningful project, whatever happens with the future, and that taxpayer dollars uh, will be well noted in our minds as we make decisions that will enhance uh, their, their property in theory. Right. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm grateful for Steve's willingness and excited to make that motion. Great. Yes, Fran. Um, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Chukri, if I could clarify, mm -hmm. I believe you may. Chairman. <laughs> I should have said chairman. I'm, um, chairman of I'm, the... ass I'm assuming that you're 
speaking of Mr. Hickman as chairman and Mr. Gallardo as, as secretary, secretary for Correct. the. I thank you. I yeah. just wanted to clarify the I motion. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. It was clear to me, Steve. Yeah. How about Steve, you? Steve or, was or trying, you to, trying to become chairman on me already. I think uh, I did. I did see <laughs> Mr. Gallardo bump. Uh, <laughs> Bump the clerk and say, "Hey, I'm chairman now." Uh, and he tried to. Steve, it didn't work. We tried. Sorry. That was that was a coup right in front of me. <laughs> My apologies. Thank you, Madam Clerk, for clarifying that. Great. Okay, so we we do have a motion in a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And hearing none. Motion carries. Congratulations, Steve. We will now adjourn as the Stadium Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Item number 43 is our public comment period. Uh, Fran has, oh, sorry, Ms. McCarroll, has anyone turned in a request to speak under public comment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Great, thank you. Now this is where I determine I need glasses. Um, First off uh, to speak, um, if she'd like to, is Amy Farmer? Did I get that? Farner. Farner, okay. I was off one, one letter, so thank you, Amy. Thank you for coming today. The story of my life with my last name. <laughs> um, I do want to say uh, quickly thank you so much for addressing animal care and control in your speech. Um, obviously, that's why we've been here for months, and so um, I just wanted to say thank you for that update. Um, I'm here as an advocate for some employees of MCACC West. I have been asked by a few of them to speak to you on their behalf um, because retaliation by management is real and they don't want the repercussions for speaking up, unfortunately. Here's just one issue I've repeatedly been asked to bring to you, the mouse infestation at West. There is definitely an issue at West as well, or at East as well, but I'm not able to speak to that specifically. Since the building of the new jail, which it's beautiful, but since the building of that, the mice from the giant field have moved into the West shelter and absolutely proliferated. Uh, there is a mouse poison in all the buildings that the mice eat and then walk back into the kennels with the dogs. Uh, the dogs can eat these mice. There are dead mice everywhere. Also, every kennel is cleaned in the morning, and by the afternoon, volunteers are finding mice droppings and mice themselves scrambling out of the dog's bedding. Can you imagine? These dogs are living with mice in their beds. It's disgusting. They are also found drowned in their water buckets amongst all the donated toys in the clean and dirty laundry, in the food bins to be delivered to the dogs, and dead, and dead on the sidewalks. Members of the public have stepped on them and watched them die. It is a big health issue that needs to be addressed for the dogs and humans alike. There are mice holes along the foundation of all the buildings as well. They are tearing apart the drywall and the insulation, and it's easy to see the destruction these tiny animals are causing just by walking around the buildings. Employees have repeatedly brought this to management's attention, and just like the temperature issue, it is being half-heartedly taken care of or even ignored, possibly altogether. Maybe the county facilities department is ultimately responsible for this issue, but something must be done. I prefer to offer solutions to issues instead of just bring up issues, but I am not an exterminator, and I'm here to plead for an investigation. Expert exterminators are definitely needed at this point to stop the very expensive destruction of all the buildings at the West facility. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for coming today. Uh, next up will, will be Andrea Alden. Good morning. When I first started volunteering at MCACC in 2018, I assumed its flaws were the result of being an underfunded, overstressed government agency, and I assumed it was overseen by individuals who were committed to the best interests of the people and pets of Maricopa County. After a visit to Pima County on New Year's Day, where I had the opportunity to visit and tour their animal care center, I now know that I was wrong about both of those things. While MCACC was closed on New Year's Day, PAC opened its doors to a long line of people waiting to adopt. New Year's Day, like July 5th, is a high intake day due to dogs running away from fireworks the night before. It's also a day most people have off of work, so it's a good time to be accessible. Again, our shelter was not even open. PAC did over 100 adoptions that day. Meanwhile, MCACC put 10 dogs on the euthanasia list that weekend. PAC has so many innovative but simple ideas that can improve our shelter dramatically. For example, adopters can send a text to be put into a queue to meet the dog, and then they'll get a text when it's their turn. 
Meanwhile, at our shelter, adopters stand in line or sit in the lobby sometimes for hours, and many people get frustrated and just leave. While PAC is spotlessly clean, MCACC is chronically understaffed and unable to keep up with daily maintenance, much less a crisis like the current rodent infestation. PAC is incredibly quiet because every single dog gets out every single day. While at MCACC, dogs can sit in their kennels for over a week with no human interaction other than being fed once a day, which leads to de deterioration, which then leads to them being euthanized. PAC has a volunteer force of almost 1,000, while MCACC's program has been decimated, largely due to decisions made by its administration. We need better leadership to bring our shelter into the century. You mentioned at the top of the meeting that you'd like to look at best practices of other shelters, and I'm here to tell you, you need to look no further than 100 miles to the south where their shelter is really leading the way. Thank you. Great, thank you, Andrea, for being here. Um, next up will be Kathleen Bow, or Kathleen B? Bow? Bow. Bow. Told you. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I want to thank you to, uh, for your hesitancy and inability to do anything for our fired volunteers. Many positive and good things have taken place in this last while. Four Paws and Friends is a nonprofit 501c3 was formed to benefit the dogs at the West Shelter. Through it, we have raised money with a great um, rummage sale. We've stuffed the sleigh raffles and other events. We provided food and manpower for a Thanksgiving feast for the dogs. We provide high quality and much needed supplies for the behavior team, such as scented oils, antlers, uh, bones, and puzzles. And we purchase and directly deliver to the, all the dogs enrichment two times a week. We are creating a searchable database of adoptable dogs, and we're sponsoring senior dogs with care packages and support to get them out. All this has been accomplished with pushback and actual sabotage by the management from the shelter. <coughs> Cash donations are now tracked, recorded, and deposited, keeping Mary Martin and management from collecting unaccounted for funds. Donations from Amazon, Chewy, and the community are now inventoried, and when Mary Martin takes things, she has to account for them and can't just haul them out. The Miranda report was released, and the public is aware of the dysfunction that employees live with day in and day out. Management has made a feeble attempt to address this, but at least you all are aware of the mess. The volunteer program has been identified as a disaster it is with the excellent article in the Republic, and I actually have copies of the newspaper article in case some of you didn't get to see it. And um, most significantly, we know that the shelter is in desperate need for good, a good volunteer program, and the public is now aware of it. Kathleen. Okay, mm -hmm. and thank you. Thank you. Very much for being here today. Okay, and can you hear those out? Thank you very okay. much. Okay, uh, now I'd like to call Jordan Bader. Hi, it's me again. I know you guys are sick of me coming here. Um, and complaining and bringing our concerns, but we are just as sick of coming here complaining and bringing our concerns. My first time coming here, I stated we will not give up on volunteering for MCACC and we will be sticking by that statement no matter what. Many people have said, why don't they just move on to a different shelter? Why don't they volunteer somewhere else? There are so many dogs that need you guys, but there's no place like County that need people more. It's one of the largest shelters in the country. It has the most dogs at the facility and the least support at the West facility. County used to have a lot of support. Every foundation that has partnered with County has separated themselves from the shelter since Mary has been there. AAWL, the Arizona Humane Society, ARM, and the Fix Adopt Save Alliance, four of the biggest names in Arizona, have separated themselves because of the director. The dogs at the West Shelter need as much support as they can get. The East Shelter has a huge, amazing group of volunteers 
so many volunteers for the amount of dogs they have. At West, there's a, such a small amount of volunteers that are involved. The volunteer program at West has deteriorated. There's not the volunteer program that there used to be. I go there every Monday and there are about four to five volunteers for over 500 dogs. As I stated before, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing, we will not give up until we are reinstated as volunteers at the shelter. As you can tell, this is not going away. As soon as we got fired, we were on the news. We have continued to come to the Board of Supervisors meeting. More articles came out online, and last week, another article on the front page of the Arizona Republic that you guys haven't passed out yet, thank you. Um, we are not going away, and we are not standing down, so you guys can either work with us or continue to see us at every single meeting. I know every time there's a director at the shelter, there's always people that are complaining and bashing and coming to these meetings. But until you find an effective and progressive director that partners with the community, volunteers, and different foundations, you will get backlash like this. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thanks for being here today. Uh, and this is, is this the last? Yes. Any other speakers? Okay, uh, Ms. Lorena Bader, please. Good morning. Hi. Um, Erica Jordan and I were fired after a picture of excessive kennel temperatures was shared on social media. Maricopa County responded to the public's outrage over our firing by informing them that we were fired because we discussed undermining op the operations of MCACC and denigrated county employees on a social media platform. A mere discussion in a private group chat is enough to undermine the shelter. Saying we love to comment in a video is denigrating an employee. A thinking person knows that those accusations are ridiculous. So instead of doing what is right and just, you have chosen to remain silent. In doing so, you have trampled on our civil rights and publicly defamed us. I predict that the court of law will not rule in your favor. Although it is understandable that you immediately supported Mary Martin and Jose Santiago, it became readily apparent that they were not deserving of this unconditional support. We provided evidence of a highly toxic, hostile, and unprofessional work environment and some highly unethical practices. I did not want to be on the front page of the Arizona Republic, speaking in front of you at every Board of Supervisor meeting or suing Maricopa County. I would much prefer addressing these concerns privately and being part of the solution. Your lack of response to our concerns has made that impossible. I do have some new ideas for 2020 that would significantly improve conditions at MCACC. Creation of a citizens oversight committee with key stakeholders addressing concerns and working towards solutions. Conducting a monthly town hall meeting where the community can address concerns. Evaluation of supervisors, managers, and the director by employees and volunteers. Conducting an operational and financial audit. And finally, reinstatement of dedicated volunteers who did nothing more than try to help the dogs at MCACC because management did not care enough to do something. As Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lorena. Appreciate y'all coming and talking with us today. Okay, next is uh, number item number 44, Supervisor's Summary of Current Events. So I will start to my left uh, today and ask uh, Supervisor Gallardo, if you'd like. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, happy New Year's to everybody, first and foremost. Um, uh, first, I just want to once again just thank Bill and, and his leadership. I know his team. Where's Laura? Laura was, there's Laura. Laura and Zach, I think Zach may have went back to his, his office as well. But, um, you know, District 3 has just been great to work with uh, throughout the whole year. And, and Chris and I just have enjoyed the, their leadership. And you guys have just done a great job, I know. You know, I always, always make this comment, you know, it doesn't matter who the elected official is, tell me who they surround themselves with, and that's gonna tell you how, how successful the office is, and you have just a great staff with Laura and, and Zach. I, uh, so thank you for, for the work you guys have done over the, over the last year. Uh, we're ready to rock and roll in District 5. We have our vision board up in our office. We've sat down last week and started throwing out ideas of what we wanna accomplish in, in 2020. I know the PPE is right around the corner. We are working 
uh, real closely with Scott. Scott's somewhere around. The, Scott may have went back to his office as well. But working with Scott and Adrian and making sure that we get the word out to our constituency, <laughs> let him know one, the PPE is right around the corner, and and goes back to our 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 uh, our, our saying is you know we want to make sure everyone's ballot ready. Uh, so we do have one organized uh, meeting that we are inviting everybody to at one of the halls here in downtown Phoenix. Um, it's going to be on a Saturday. We want everyone's on uh, January 25th, uh, 8.30 to 10.30. We're inviting everybody to come in. Uh, we're even inviting the political campaigns, all of them that are in town today, come this is what election day is going to look like. This is what, what our plan is. We're going to have our polling site map there. We're going to have Adrian there talking about the early voting side. We'll have Scott there talking about our election day services, but really getting the word out. We're also having uh, one is strictly in Spanish. We're working with Spanish media. We're going to have it at Desert Sky Mall, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. They're uh, working with Chicanos Pro Casa to have a, a Spanish version of one just to talk about the PPE. So we're ready to rock and roll when it comes to the election side of things. And then just, you know, we want to continue to be out in the community, continue to want to uh, educate the community on, on, on uh, the great work that Maricopa County uh, it does every day, and the different services and programs are available. Uh, I never forget when I first ran for office, uh, so many times I knock on a door and tell people, you know, I'm running for office, I'm running for Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, and so many folks just were not aware of what the county actually does. You know, they, this is where they, you vote or go to jail. That's, that's what they knew about Maricopa County. But, you know, we do so many great things here for the people of of, of Maricopa County, and, and as we always say, it's the largest uh, county, uh, uh, well, the fourth largest county in the country, and, and, and uh, do tremendous uh, uh, work throughout the day uh, serving the, uh, the, the four million or so people. So we want to get that word out. We want to continue to educate the community. So we're having, a, there's one, a street fair, matter of fact, on Saturday we're going to be at. Uh, so continue to be out in the community, continue to educate the community, continue to listen to their issues, address their concerns. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2020. Great. Thank you, Steve. Bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Great speech. I thought that was a great um, uh, summary of the issues that, you know, you want to work on, that this board has been working on over the years. And just want to let you know I'm really, really excited uh, for your chairmanship. Uh, looking forward to your leadership. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Gallardo beat me to it. But uh, Laura, thank you for everything. I know it has been a long year, uh, so much on the go. Uh, to the ex extent that we've accomplished anything, it would not have happened without you. Of course, you had a baby in the middle of it, and which is and congratulations. And Lily is just amazing. And uh, uh, and uh, but still to be able to accomplish everything. And then he was here earlier, but uh, now gone. You know how Zach stepped up uh, in your absence and did a great job. I mean. You guys were just a great team. So thank you to everything. Uh, Laura, ex excited for uh, what 2020 uh, is coming ahead for us. Uh, I will uh, continue to, to be out in New River Desert Hills every month. Uh, so that's something that Andy Kanasik started, uh, and we've continued on with that. I mean, uh, we, we can never find out what's going on out there, you know, so many miles away by sitting in an office here. And so just grateful to our, to our friends up there in New River and Desert Hills, and, uh, and we'll continue to be out there. Uh, as well, just following up on what, what others have said, elections, again, I agree, Mr. Chair, number one priority is making sure that we have three very successful elections here in 2020. Uh, we've had the opportunity here, just starting this week and going on later into this week, to have members of the legislature come out and see this new elections equipment in action. So we appreciate the support we've received from them uh, as well. I know that the, the political parties are very interested in this, and we want to make sure that they they understand the new system and, and, and feel comfortable with it. And in fact, I think we're going to be uh, rolling this out for the, the county Republican meeting on Saturday. That elections equipment is going to be used so the folks there can see that in action, kind of a nice little uh, dry run. So we appreciate the partnership uh, of the county Republican uh, committee. And certainly I, I know we'd, we'd like to, to work with the Democrats as well on that. So uh, a lot on the go here in 2020. but. 
the other thing I wanted to make sure to do is, is thank Joy. It's been uh, it's been wonderful working with you in the last year as chair. Your leadership uh, is just incredible, and the entire team, 13,000 strong of Maricopa County employees. I, I had great respect for them before, but but now just seeing, especially how they acted and, and reacted to some of the challenges that we had uh, this year. Uh, Joy, I just want to thank you for your leadership and the entire team. and. Uh, uh, and, and what you've done as well in this tough labor market, quite frankly, to get creative, to bring people on board, and to help people understand what a great place this is to work and how fulfilling it can be to work in public service. So, so thank you, Joy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you, Bill. Steve. Um, I won't go on long. I know we, we've used a, a lot of this morning for, for great things, but... I actually took notes, Mr. Chairman, of your speech, uh, and the items that jumped out should be of no surprise to any of us. And what I think uh, the beauty of it is, is that we are now charting a course for 2020 to tackle uh, these issues, uh, issues we've heard this morning, issues that we've known of the past, uh, your moratorium ideas, uh, your reform efforts with animal care and control, all these other things are going to be, uh, I think, amazingly well done with your leadership. Uh, they're not going to be easy, but they will be well done. So uh, most importantly, I think uh, to continue the legacy of elections reform uh, since uh, my chairmanship and, and what Mr. Gates has done so ably uh, the past uh, 12 months, uh, it's we are going to have a good elections. Uh, and, and it's going to be, I, I think, uh, best in class as long as Gallardo doesn't screw it up. And, uh, we, and, and, we're, and I think we're, we're doing it uh, in a very mindful way. But if I were to go back to 2019 and say, what, what was that ex exclamation mark or what really jumped off the page? It was the working relationship that we had with our constituents on such a critical issue like elections in all five of our districts. Mm -hmm. And that's something to not only praise and applaud, but something to be grateful for, that you have that, you know, that citizen action uh, to to bring about something that's better, not just for them, but for all of Maricopa County. So I, I look forward to that. Uh, but thank you to uh, former Chairman Gates uh, for for bringing that idea, or excuse me, for reminding us of the idea that they are going to be there on Saturday and that we can see it firsthand. I think that's government in action, if there is any such thing. Great. Thank you, Steve. Supervisor Sellers. Thank you. And, and to me, today is primarily about the uh, the passing of the gavel, uh, but I, and I'll reserve my re remarks about uh, my current events until next week. <laughs> I'm not giving up that opportunity, but uh, what a year it's been for me, uh, my first year on the board, and um, you know, I, I can't tell you how much I've appreciated all of you, the way you've welcomed me, the way you've, you've mentored me, the way you've helped me through some pretty challenging things. And I've certainly gained so much appreciation for all of our chiefs of staff as well. Uh, Laura and Zach, uh, just outstanding people to work with. Uh, looking forward to working even more with Scott as we go forward. But, you know, all the chiefs have really been a great aid to, to me as well as all of us. And um, I look forward to an exciting 2020. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jack. Joy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to take this time to thank Shelby as well. I didn't get to comment before, but Shelby has obviously been a trusted and valued member of the county team for many years, but she has been a remarkable member of our executive team since I've become county manager. I've got to know her so much better. We forget that she was actually acting county manager when I became county manager, and had she been interested in the position, there's no doubt she'd be sitting here instead of me. Um, I would put her up against any private sector or public sector CFO. Um, she is so supportive of her other leaders. Uh, you don't always find that, frankly. It's never about Shelby. It's always about the mission of the county. And I will tell you, she's made decades-long friendships here that I know will outlast her time here. And I just really wanted to say thank you, Shelby. She's been a tremendous supporter. She's patiently taught me uh, things that I didn't know that have helped me um, you know, assume this position. And um, we work hard here, but we also like to have fun. And Shelby's a lot of fun, so that's a very important uh, other skill that she's brought to the job. But I just want to thank you for the, your friendship, Shelby, and everything you've done for the county. Great. So um, just 
real quickly because we have a we have a special meeting uh, that we are going to be getting to here shortly. I just wanted to mention a couple things uh, that I didn't get a, a chance to mention in my speech. Um, Kevin Tynes here for procurement. Kevin, thank you very much. I mentioned Vendor University, and it was because of your hard work that pulled off a good one, and now it continues on. So thank you, Kevin, for for working hard in that space. Uh, R.J. I see you're here and the parks. I mentioned, I mentioned that parks are extremely important to this county and it's because you do such a great job with it too. So thank you uh, for your leadership and, and uh, Bruce Liggett with that clean start uh, as many times that I, as I've talked to, to Bruce that he gets his people working on, on new and different things and innovative, stra innovative strategies to get, get uh, offenders plugged back into the economy. I'd like to, I'd like to see him as workers and not, and as uh, constructive members of our economy, not not just spending time in jail. So, thank you for for all of that. Um, you, we are going to be putting our shoulder to the to the wheel. I think that's a great idea, Steve, about talking, getting the chance to to let, really let people vet out uh, what this PP and E is going to look like. As most of you are aware, the Republicans are not having a PPE, but I think you're going to maybe quite possibly learn some vital things, not just for the PPE, but also as we get as we get geared up for both a, a primary and general election. So thanks for taking that time. Uh, we do work on Saturdays. You know, that's 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 important to all of us. I talk to you guys a lot on Saturdays as we're doing things on Saturdays. It's just it's just never really, you know, seen too much out there in the sphere. Um, so with that, thanks. It's it's going to be a pleasure. That I, I wanted to comment on my speech just about being uh, the traditional way of the county and and how many years some of these things take to get fruition. But it's through hard work through through all those years. And Bill, basically, I just see this is not really passing the gavel, but passing a baton. And um, that's what we do here. And I think we do we do it well from from all of you guys back to back to Denny and. And uh, Andy, the, at the time that I got to see them be chairman, it, all, it makes us all a better chairman. Uh, Laura, thank you uh, for you and Zach and your hard work this year. The, uh, again, such a turbulent year, and you guys did it masterfully. And that uh, the uh, the praise that we're giving uh, your your boss is a reflection uh, back to you guys for doing that. I can guarantee uh, that Scott Isham uh, and Michelle. Uh, will be very easy to get a hold of uh, and work through these issues. It's just through the through the year. I, they know that they're going to have a a little bit of a harder job this year as as being chairman. So thank you guys for for being there for me. So with that, um, happy New Year to everybody, and uh, and off we go. Uh, do I need to recess? You can actually adjourn this one and start the next one. Okay. So do I have to take a motion for adjournment? Okay, we are going to adjourn uh, this meeting of the, of the Board of Supervisors, and now we will reconvene uh, the special meeting which was posted regarding the county assessor. Um, so I, I don't know if I should, this has been uh, a very tough uh, road for all five of us, including I'm sure the, the county manager, uh, staff. I'm, this has been a very tough time, I think, for the assessor's office. And it has been um, not, we haven't looked forward to any of these meetings. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to say one more time uh, just how important it was uh, that Bill Gates uh, was there for this and navigated this. He had a legal mind towards it. He's a lawyer in real life. And I so much appreciated you being there in that spot with something so rare that, that occurred. And again, the diligent and slow process that, you know, that I think people that read the papers wonder sometimes why we move so slow, but sometimes it really shows uh, the character of this board and the character of the leader of that board and, and how he navigates us through it. So thank you. I'm, as we continue to have this, I'm still going to be looking uh, to you to get us uh, to get us through that. Um, there also, I believe, I should mention, uh, quite possibly after this vote, we will start discussing a process about that publicly elected uh, position. Um, before, before, yeah. So, 
being that, uh, that that's great, uh, Supervisor Chuka reminded me, he, he has been leading us well, so I thought maybe this would be a good time to turn the microphone over to, to Bill to talk us through a couple things. Well, first of all, Mr. Chair, thanks for the, the kind comments uh, as it relates to this process, but the reality is we've done everything as a board, and that's the reason that we've been able to act deliberatively uh, and appropriately is that we have all worked together, and again, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this board uh, through, through this difficult process. Um, at our last meeting uh, on this uh, particular issue, December 27th, uh, we did vote as a board uh, with respect to sustaining the suspension of Mr. Peterson. We also stated, actually in the motion that you made, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we would uh, be following up with a written opinion regarding uh, the sustaining, uh, sustaining the suspension of Mr. Peterson. Uh, given that Mr. Peterson has now submitted his resignation yesterday uh, to me as the, as the board chair at that time, and also uh, to Fran McCarroll as the clerk of the board, then uh, that is moot. And Mr. Chair, I don't believe that this, this board needs to uh, submit a written opinion with regard to sustaining the suspension. As well, it was also part of another motion that you made uh, that we would refer uh, this issue to the county attorney, Alistair Adele, for uh, removal proceedings so that you know she could pursue that. Again, given that Mr. Peterson has resigned, I also think that, that that's moot and there's no reason uh, for Ms. Adele to move forward with that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, very much, Bill, for uh, your succinct comments about the issue. Uh, any other comments? No? Mr. So Chairman, just a, just a quick uh, uh, thank you to, to Bill Alley, who has uh, taken over and, and being the, uh, the interim assessor. He's done a great job, and I know he's, he's on the, he's, we're going to keep him along a little bit longer until we find a permanent replacement. I do want to just thank Bill for what he's done. Thank you for saying that, Steve. So, uh, looking for a motion. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> yes, I move that we accept yourself. the resignation of Paul Peterson. Mr. Chairman, motion. I second that motion. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. With that being said, this board is adjourned.